morning students uh, welcome you all so this is our uh, first lecture for our plus 2 students and the chapter we have chosen here is solutions so this is a part of physical chemistry chapter okay so and may, most of the students used to say this chapter is very tough basically but in my understanding this is something one of the fundamental chapters because we would like to know many things that we see in our regular daily life but uh, to understand the science of it so this is one uh, such chapter that will make you understand uh, the concept of boiling concept of evaporation concept of vapor pressure okay freezing what is freezing all these things you will be able to understand okay so here the uh, you could see the term solutions okay so first we will define what is basically a solution okay then what solution is composed of okay then uh, we will deal with one by one by one topic okay so to start with solutions i could say what is basically a solution a solution i could say the first feature is it is a homogeneous mixture okay understand that it is a homogeneous mixture so a homogeneous mixture that is having a single phase that is having a single phase is considered to be a solution now i can say a solution is made up of two stuffs one is called solute and other is called solvent and the important thing you should remember here is the solvent and solute should be chemically non reacting it should not react actually it should not react it should be chemically non reacting so how a solution is obtained whenever you mix a solute and solvent which is non reacting in nature you will obtain a homogeneous mixture which is having a single phase such a mix such a such a mixture or such a stuff is called my solution then biggest question is what is homogeneous mixture or uh, what is this same phase same composition many students have doubt i will explain one simple example i can say is take water okay and take some teaspoons of sugar and if you mix these two okay a good amount if you mix it and stir it for some amount of time so what you really obtain is a homogeneous mixture so why we say it is a homogeneous mixture because you cannot physically or you cannot see separately both sugar and the solvent water in different types for example you cannot physically distinguish so that is their composition is present same throughout the solution okay so you cannot physically distinguish between them then we say such a mixture is called a homogeneous mixture now the next question is uh, what is then heterogeneous let me tell that also so you will be clearly you will be able to understand in a heterogeneous mixture it is different basically so for example you are taking water and you are mixing with the sand okay then you are stirring it any number of times but still what will happen you could after stirring you could physically distinguish between what this sand and you could separately with water so you can physically identify water is present here and sand is present here so that such a mixture we call it as a heterogeneous mixture okay so solution is nothing but i could say solution solution is made up of solution is equal to solution is made up of two things one is called solvent and the other substance is called solute so you have two substances here so such a solution which is having a one single solvent and one single solute is called a binary solution okay so this can be called as a binary solution binary solution so you know binary means what by binary means two so you have one solute and one solvent then we say such stuff is called binary solution now the biggest question here is sir how will you distinguish between a solvent and a solute sir how we can identify very simple what you should remember here is solvent is something that is present in large quantity or excess quantity and solute is something that is present in smaller amounts i can say what is that limit but still we can say something that is present in a smaller amount is called solute and something that is present in a larger amount is called a solvent okay 
so i will uh, write that also solvent the main feature is present in it will be present in large quantity large quantity okay so what about solute solute has the main feature it will be present in it will be present in smaller amounts smaller amounts okay so i hope you got a clear picture what is basically a solution so i can define a solution as a homogeneous mixture when what when what happens when a solute and a solvent is mixed okay that is basically called my solution a solution can be of different types it can be binary solution or it can be ternary solution or it can be a quaternary solution binary means you will have single solvent and a single solute so combining these two we can say it is a binary solution ternary means there will be multiple solutes in that okay and a single solvent then we can say it's a ternary solution so it can be multiple solvent and a single solute it can be any way i so for understanding there will be three things that is a better way and quaternary means you will have four components out there now biggest question next thing sir solvent uh, many students used to ask this doubt sir solvent is always whether it is liquid in my understanding always solvent means liquid this is what more commonly students used to say so please understand here solvent can be anything it can be solid liquid or even gas similarly solute can also be anything it can be solid liquid or gas so based on this we have we can see different examples also when the solvent becomes liquid and solute becomes gas what is the example when solvent becomes liquid and solute becomes a solid what is the example so there is a chart is there that we will explain soon or later okay to understand more about the solution so currently we have defined only two things solvent and a solute when these two are mixed then these two should be chemically non-reacting then you will get a homogeneous mixture that is having same composition throughout such a stuff is called my solution and solu solvent means something that is present in larger quantity and solute means something that is present in smaller quantity okay when there are only two stuffs are there we say it's a binary solution three are there we say it's a ternary solution and when there is four we say quaternary solution so hope you understand this then we will go to the next topic so the next topic what we are going to discuss here is the properties of the solution so we have just discussed some properties we told it's a homogeneous mixture it has solute and solvent something we told but this list the basic properties that you should remember so that you will get a clear picture what exactly a solution is okay so we will go through the first property as we have already discussed the first property states that it is it consists of a single phase the phase always means you cannot distinguish between solute and solvent once the solution is formed so we can say single phase as another word also monophasic system it is also called monophasic mono mono means single monophasic so sometimes in entrance exam they used to ask this question a solution is biphasic monophasic triphasic like that so it is basically a monophasic system okay monophasic now next thing a solution is uniform throughout correct so if you for example here also you could think of the uh, sugar with water here you can say it is uniform whether you will feel when you take some uh, solution into your mouth whether from okay uh, if you take it from the deep or if you take it from the surface or if it is from the left part or right part you will feel the same thing you will feel the same taste okay that means that solute is uniformly mixed with the solvent then we can say a solution usually is what in nature uniform throughout okay and also we can uh, test this in another way chemically you can take the density of the solution you can test the refractive index so if it is uniform means it this value this typical parameter value still remains the same it will not vary between different solution between the same solution for different amount or if you take it from the left part or from the right part it will be uniform throughout hope you understood okay next thing so if the size of the solute particles is less than 10 power minus 7 centimeter please remember this this figure has an importance so if it is less than 10 power minus 7 centimeter we call such a solution as true solution very very important 
okay so what is you know solute and solvent is there you know solvent is present in larger amount and solute is present in smaller quantity and if the size of the solute please remember it is mentioning about the size not about the quantity of the solute so if the size of the solute is less than 10 power minus 7 centimeter we call such a solution as true solution okay now if you go to the fourth property it cannot be separated easily by physical methods so this is an important point so usually we say we know uh, we have the classification like uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture and in, a, in the case of a homogeneous mixture where it is present in single phase so it cannot be separated by physical methods what do you mean by physical methods for example you have a filter out there okay think of a filter now uh, if you have sand is mixed in water if you use that filter you can easily filter the sands very easily but if you have something like sugar in water and if you try to do do the separation by filtering using a filter whether it is possible possibly not so that's why it's very difficult that's why it is say it cannot be separated easily by physical methods okay so please understand that next thing uh, we can say properties of the solution are the properties of the components very very important point here uh, students used to say sir this uh, uh, property or this feature it's very difficult to understand very easy actually so what is told here properties of the solutions are properties of the components so please to understand this i will take another stuff for example you know elements and compounds are there correct pure substances is classified into we can say elements and compounds okay so how what is basically a compound a compound is formed from more than one type of element or atoms of different element combined together to form a compound now one simple example i can say is two hydrogen atom can combine with one oxygen atom to form water now the question is here hydrogen atom has some properties okay oxygen atom has some properties now when they are combining and forming water i can say the properties of the water is totally different from hydrogen and oxygen understood that is for compounds i can say the properties of the compounds are not the properties of the components but for solution i can say for example you have sugar is there you have water is there now when you form a sugar solution i can say the properties of the sugar solution will be the combination of the properties of water and sugar so you got a clear picture I, I could understand but in the case of a compound I could say water you know right water will always prevent the fire you put water over fire means it will get you know it will get uh, soon get off but you know oxygen always helps in what actually oxygen is mandatory stuff for uh, fire actually for burning to happen you need oxygen correct but the product that is formed out of oxygen with the hydrogen it is having totally a different property and hydrogen and oxygen are gases but water that is formed is a liquid so there in the case of a compound i can clearly say the properties of the comp compounds are not the properties of its components but in the case of solution i can clearly say the properties of the solution are the properties or the sum of the properties of its components or constituents okay I hope the point is clear for you now next thing the properties like density viscosity surface tension boiling point freezing point varies with the composition this we are going to see in uh, near future what we say as colligative property will come to that so here they are telling for example uh, I can say it like if you have a solvent okay so if you pour 5 gram of sugar hmm, and if you boil it I can say it will boil at a temperature above 100 degree for example 101 degree and if you have another solvent and if you are pouring 10 gram of uh, sugar or 15 gram of sugar then I can say its boiling point will be not 101 degree it will be 102 or 103 it will be much more than that why it is that we will explain further but now you understand that it will depend it will varies with the composition that is how much amount of the solute you are adding so how much solvent is present so based on that the properties like density viscosity these things will be varying so many students will say sir this point is confusing with this one uniform throughout 
uniform throughout means once you mixed it you cannot distinguish different part of the solution it will be same throughout okay but here i am taking two different solution one solution is having 5 gram sugar other is having 10 gram sugar both will be uniform okay but both will be having properties will be varying okay so both are different please understand it in that way so i hope the properties of the solutions are very clear the first property it is monophasic or we can say homogeneous in nature next is it has it has the solution is uniform throughout you cannot distinguish or it is not non-uniform where the you could say i have already explained so it is uniform throughout next thing if the particle size of the solute is less than 10 power minus 7 centimeter such a solution is called true solution and the next property we cannot separate it by physical methods easily example think of a sugar solution okay next property here we told the properties of the solution are the properties of its components okay so here we have compared with the compound the compound has properties of the compounds are not the properties of its components or constituents and the last one the properties like density viscosity surface tension etc boiling point and freezing point varies with its composition composition means solute and solvent composition one will be having huge amount of solute other will be having lesser amount of solute based on that these properties will be varying in nature so i hope you understood the concept of properties of solution so next we will uh, go to the next topic so next we are going to discuss what do you mean by a dilute solution as well as a concentrated solution so dilute solution it is very easy to understand so in the case of a dilute solution in the case of a dilute solution so from the term itself you could understand dilute solution means the solute concentration will be comparatively lesser compared to the solvent so generally the solute concentration is less but generally if you take that also from that also it will be very much less so i can say solute concentration solute concentration is very less is very less compared to compared to solvent concentration okay so solute concentration is very less compared to what solvent concentration then such a solution is called a dilute solution okay now we can say what is a concentrated solution concentrated solution can be interpreted in two ways we can generally say the solute concentration is comparatively higher is comparatively larger okay but we cannot say it will it is more than solvent okay but we can say like in a concentrated solution you cannot add further solute okay if you add further solute it will not dissolve so or we can say in a good way in a concentrated solution the solute is present in maximum concentration thereafter it is not possible to add further solute so that it will not dissolve okay so we can say concentrated solution so what is a concentrated solution concentrated solution concentrated solution concentrated solution a solution solution in which in which further addition of solute is not possible a solution in which further addition of solute is not possible why because the solute will not further dissolve in that so solute concentration is maximum here that is solute concentration solute concentration is maximum okay such a solution is called concentrated solution 
so i hope you understood what is dilute solution and concentrated solution so in a dilute solution you can still add the solute it will keep on dissolving but a point will come there you cannot further add the solute so that particular point at, at that moment what is the concentration of the solute so such a solution is called a concentrated solution there the solute concentration will be maximum okay so i hope you understood the topic dilute solution and concentrated solution okay next we are uh, going to learn the topic different types of solution as i have earlier hinted i told right solution the solute and solvent can be anything actually so generally solution means students have a feeling like the solute is always solid and the solvent is always a liquid it's not like that it can be anything okay so if you see here the first thing the different types of solution i could see here i have mentioned here the solute and the solvent is mentioned here and the example for that so you need to learn these uh, examples also because in board exams as well as in entrance exams they can ask the examples and say which category it belongs to or they can uh, like that for example they say chloroform plus nitrogen is a what type of solution or what is the type of solute used there anything they can ask so you should learn this very very important okay so first we are going to learn is the gaseous solution okay we say it is a gaseous solution why we say this as a gaseous solution that is the first thing to remember we say in terms of gaseous solution in terms of solvent we know solvent is present in large quantity so if the solvent is mainly gas we say such a type of solution as gaseous solution so here we are taking different types of example here the solvent is always gas and the solute is gas initially so you have two gases mixed then we say it's a gaseous solution example mixture of oxygen and nitrogen gases so here it can be oxygen if it is present in large quantity we say solvent is oxygen and nitrogen present in small quantity we say the solute is nitrogen okay so the next thing we say uh, again gaseous solution where the solute is a liquid okay so you have a solute that is liquid so liquid that is present in small quantity and gas is present in large quantity so example for that is chloroform with nitrogen gas so nitrogen gas is here present in excess and chloroform is present in smaller quantity so such a solution is called again it's a gaseous solution where the solute is a liquid now we see the third example where the solute is a solid and the solvent is a gas example camphor okay we used to say carpuram like that so camphor plus nitrogen gas where camphor is present in smaller quantity and that's why it forms the solute so these are the examples of gaseous solution so you could see gaseous solution can be of three types where the solvent always remain the gas but the solute will be gas liquid and solid okay so next we will see liquid solution so why we say it is liquid solution here if you see the solvent is always liquid okay so here also the solute can be anything correct solute can be gas or solute can be liquid or solute can be solid also okay so when the uh, gas is used as the solute so gas in liquid so gas in liquid very easy example you know all aquatic animals are living in water because oxygen is dissolved in water so the most common example is oxygen dissolved in water okay so the next one is liquid in liquid this is also everyone easy to remember because you might have seen alcohol in water is very simple example where alcohol can we can say it is present in smaller quantity and water is present in larger quantity that's why ethanol you know alcohol is nothing but ethanol so ethanol in water okay then the last example is solid in liquid this is the most common we are actually here discussing and liquid in liquid so this chapter mainly discuss with this stuff where the solvent is mainly liquid and the solute can be gas or it can be liquid or it can be solid so the chapter solution mainly deals with this area liquid solutions this is there but not very not only just an introduction is mentioned nothing more in detail so the chapter mainly deals with the liquid solutions okay so solid in liquid means it can be sugar in water okay or it can be glucose in water so anything or salt in water so these are examples of uh, liquid solutions where solute is solid and solvent is 
liquid so i hope you understood what is gaseous solution and liquid solution now we have one more that is what solid solution gaseous solution is completed liquid solution is completed in a solid solution the solvent will be what actually it will be a solid okay we will see that so next we are going to discuss what we call it as the solid solution so in a solid solution as i told the solvent is always solid okay the solute can be gas liquid or solid so simple example gas in solid we say hydrogen in palladium hydrogen is a gas and palladium is solid in nature and we can say liquid in solid liquid in solid the most common example is mercury mercury you know it is liquid a liquid mercury when mixed with sodium and the last one solid in solid the most common example is alloys or we can say copper dissolved in gold so these are the basic examples first so you need to learn these examples that is very important so uh, we have learned the three types of solutions that is the solid solution gaseous solution and liquid solution and the focus of this chapter is liquid solution so we'll go to the next topic i hope you understood